All right, here we are on Math 7, Chapter 3 still, looking at Lesson 4. This lesson is on multiplying integers. Uh, the key thing when multiplying integers, if you remember back to your lesson today, is that when you multiply integers that have different signs, like a 3 times a negative 15, then the product is negative. So a positive times a negative will end up with a negative answer. But if the signs, like over here, happen to be the same, a negative 11 times a negative 9, then we end up with a positive solution. So the product will be positive there. There are a few cases here where we'll look at some exponential things. And remember that an exponent means the same number times itself, two times, could be three times, whatever that might be. If we end up in a situation, like the sample five, where there are three in a row, then we use order operations. We go left to right, and we have a same sign here, so that becomes a positive 12, which has it listed there. But because you have to continue, then that positive becomes times multiplied by a negative, and you're back to negative. So when there's three, you just have to pay attention to what's happening and be careful. With that in mind, let's take a look then at tonight's homework, looking at some of these slice problems. Now, number two, we have 15 times a 4. Well, 15 times 4, just mathematically, 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 60, and I have the same signs, a negative times a negative, when the signs are the same. In this case, I end up with a positive answer, so a positive 60 for number 2. On number 5, I have a negative 5 times a negative 5 times a negative 5, because it's to the cube power, which means I make write this thing out three times in a row. 5 times 5 is 25. And because it's a negative and a negative, I end up with a positive 25. But I'm going to continue and multiply that by 5 more, in this case negative. The signs are different, so I'm going to end up with a negative answer. I don't know what 25 times 5 is, so I'll write it out right here. 25 times 5, 5 times 5 is 25, 25, carry that there. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. And because, again, positive and a negative, I end up with a negative solution for negative 125. For number 6, I start by looking at these two, grouping these up here. I'm going to start there. So negative 3 times a negative 2 will give me a positive 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, and 2 negatives make a positive. Now I'm going to take the, neg the positive 6 and multiply it by a positive 1, and I'm left with simply 6 as my answer. Number 8. Number 8 says that wave erosion, means it's going away, erosion, eroding, going away, causes a certain coastline to recede, moving away, getting less, at a rate of 3 centimeters each year. 3 centimeters a year. This occurs uninterrupted for a period of 8 years. So for 8 years in a row, we are losing, receding, 3 centimeters. So I have 3 centimeters going away every 8 years. I could write this out as year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5, year 6, year 7, year 8, and do minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. But that's a whole lot of minuses, and it excludes the fact that we use multiplication to do repeated addition and repeated subtraction. So in this case here, I take my erosion, 3 centimeters a year, and I'm going to multiply that by how many years it happens. 8 times. Negative 3 times 8 is going to give me 24. But because I have a negative times a positive, I'm going to be giving a solution of a negative 24 because I'm going to lose a total of 24 centimeters after 8 years. Again, if I did it this way, I could add that up and continue moving 3, 3, 3, and add up, end up with a same solution, negative 24. But we're working on multiplication there. Let's turn the page. Looking on the next page, extra practice here. We have 25 times a negative 2. The signs are different, so I'll have a negative answer. And 25 times 2, that's like a quarter and another quarter. I'm talking about money. Ends up with 50, so I'm at negative 50 for number 18. Number 19, we had one just like this before. A negative 4 times a negative 4 times another negative 4. So 4 times 4 is 16, and a negative and a negative makes it a positive, but I'm still going to multiply that by another negative 4. I don't know 16 times 4, 
So I'll do it off to the side here. 6 times 4 is 24. And 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. And I have a positive times a negative, so I'm going to have a negative 64 as my answer. On number 21, negative 9 times a negative 1, because the signs are the same, I end up with a positive answer, 9 times a negative 5. Now my signs are different, so I'll have a negative answer, and 9 times 5 is 45. So I have a negative 45. On number 22, word problem. love word problems, lots of fun. It says the average person loses 50 to 80 hairs per day to make way for new growth. It's a lot of hair you're losing every single day on average. Some, I guess, more than others. Suppose you lose 65, so losing 65, that'd be losing 65 hairs per day for 15 days without growing any. So let's say we have 65 hairs we lose on day one, and we can continue that for a total of 15 days. One, that's a lot of hair you're losing, and uh, yep, it's going to be a problem. Um, so let's multiply this out. I have 65 times 15. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. And I have a placeholder 0 right there. And 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 6 is 6. So we have 5, 7, and 975. But because the negative times a positive, I'm going to end up losing negative, or I'm going to lose 975 hairs per day. Now, it's just that suppose you have that. Uh, it's not really right to do this. Write a multiplication expression representing the decision, and then find the product. So it's meaning we end up with not negative 975. You're not losing negative hair. It just means you're losing, we're going to end up losing 975 uh, pieces of hair. They're not negative hairs or positive hairs. It's just hair. This just tells me that I'm not gaining any. I'm going to be losing that many. That's what that negative stands for there. All right. Number 27, 29, a couple things we're going to fill in here. We have values given to us uh, for A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to plug those in. B happens to be a negative 4, and C happens to be a positive 3. So 4 times 3 is 12, but a negative times a positive is a negative, so negative 12. On the next one, A is negative 6, and B we said was a negative 4, and C is cubed. So I'm going to have 3 times 3 times 3. If I want to write it out that way, or I could keep it 3 cubed. It doesn't really matter too much. Either way, 6 times 4 is 24, and it's going to be positive. 24 times 3 cubed, I can keep going out here. 24 times the first 3 gives me 12, 6, 72. That's exciting. That's one 3. Times another 3 gives me 216. That's the second 3. Times another 3 gives me 18, 3, 4, and 640. 48, if I did that right. A little complicated, kind of a long, silly problem. The idea, though, is that you're trying to see, is it positive or negative? Because those two negatives combine first, you end up with a positive, and the rest is positive, and it's 648. And that's it for today. Hope that helps a little bit. Good luck with the rest of your homework.